Welcome back. You're watching Standpoint here on Morning Prime. And of course, this is the final, of course, hour of the show. We want to interrogate a new bill that uh, is on the floor of the Senate. That is a Constitution Amendment Bill 2023, where we have the nominated Senator Rafael Chimera seeking to bar governors who have uh, run for their full term, five years or ten years, if they are re-elected from running for the office of the Senate or member of parliament and this is citing as a conflict of interest because he's asking a very germane question how will the same senator who was a governor also be overseeing the county government that he's been the governor within that particular five years the files of malpractice and malfeasance that was from that particular government will be on his table so this is sort of a conflict of interest but also they are looking at the flip side of it maybe also there is some some selfish interest from the senators themselves. They want to run for that particular office. And so if this legislation really comes to pass, then it means their com main competitor, who is currently the governor, will actually have um, an upper hand. And so if this legislation comes to fall, it means then the senator, who is currently maybe in parliament, will have an upper hand. So we want to interrogate this particular conflict uh, this particular not really conflict of interest but this constitutional amendment bill in light of conflict of interest as it is a case in point is what is going on with the county of wasangishu county and you've been doggedly following this story i think also we have it today in uh, the dailies where we are given to understand that over 40 students will be beneficiary of this sponsorship that has been embroiling wasangishu county and the former governor who is the senate uh, uh who is a senator right now is also the chair of the health committee at the senate so let's open the floor and we begin from the senate floor what do you think about this particular bill itself uh, <laughs> I, I i see the common sense of that bill but the political sense of it and even the constitutional sense of it escapes me mm. because article 38 of the constitution is very clear on political rights in fact article 38 says clearly uh, in sabbatical 3 mm. it says every adult citizen has the right you know without unreasonable restrictions and to, to run amongst other things to be a candidate for any public office that is established under this constitution including the office of senator office of mp office of president office of whatever so there's that question of how does that constitutional amendment sit with this the political rights of individuals you know how do you uh, restrict someone from, from running for office I think there's a, there's a big question there and um, if we are to go using that kind of uh, logic that uh, this person having held an office he may likely interfere with oversight and that kind of thing are we then saying that someone who has served as a minister or a cabinet secretary or a, a, a cabinet administrative secretary should then be barred also for, from running? Because he may have handled the government funds at some point and there might be a conflict of interest. What about someone who was a PS in, uh, you know, in agriculture? Uh, does it mean then we should bar him from being a, a senator? Uh, what about somebody who was in private sector in the area of governance and uh, he, he, he was running a program within the constituency or the county and then people said, no, you should be elected. Should we also bar him because maybe there could be questions of governance that could come up uh, in future? You know, then what are we saying? We are saying every person who is in governance should be barred because for five years or ten years or whatever, as the bill proposes, before they can run again. I think this is, um, is not going to sit well with the freedoms that uh, individuals have within the constitution. And uh, that is a huge hurdle that bill will face before it becomes a reality. And we, we need to also agree that the way committees work, um, if you, you have a problem, you are supposed to recuse yourself. In fact, uh, you are supposed to declare interest when you are sitting in a committee that this matter affects me. 
uh, or even when you are about to debate an issue, one of the standing orders will require you to say, to declare if you have an interest or not before you make a contribution on that, on that issue. So I believe... Uh, but you've seen uh, declaring of interest here does not really fly in this country. Yeah. How many people have actually been, we have yeah. legislation to declare wealth, still we want to actually no, no, no. come up with a new legislation declaration, the of, of, declaration of wealth is something totally different from what i'm saying if let's say there's an issue that is coming before uh the the transport and infrastructure committee and they are discussing maybe a road and your company was involved in the, in that road and there's an issue about that road maybe there's a public petition or is a question the committee has to consider you cannot actually the best thing is to recuse yourself from that discussion you cannot really participate. And if you must participate, you must state that I, I am a, the owner of this company so that everyone who is listening to you will be listening to you clearly knowing what your position is. But so from where I Gatana, you live in this country, yes, ownership is, is a gray area. We are proxies and shadowy owners of these companies. No, no, the, the law has now been changed that you are supposed to declare all beneficial, in, uh, beneficial ownership in the Companies Act. Eh? So everybody must be declared. But having said that, going to the issue, I think um, I am one of those because pe people. Uh, I'll still me, like, I'll still like, I know you're trying to throw it, but it's still large no, no, on it. Because I, even I, when I, we talk about the law me, has been declared, we have the Bureau of Registration, which is challenging that particular. I know. But you uh, care that because of data protection. Now let me go to, to my issue first. I finish my point. I want to say this. I am one of those politicians who believe that let us level the ground for everybody, okay? Let, let the freedoms of this country <coughs> be expansionist rather than restrictive. So I would oppose any person who comes and says, apart from your ID card and the voter's registration card that is required uh, for purposes of voting, to vote someone else in the office, then you say we need a degree, you know? We need to have, uh, I don't know, a certificate for this and this. When I'm voting you in, I, I'm not asked for a degree when I'm voting in. Everybody can vote in. So there's universal suffrage, but then you are saying to be an MP, you must be educated to this level. To be a governor, you must be educated to this level. You are not expanding the interpretation of freedoms within the Constitution. You are reducing the interpretation of freedoms. So for me also, a law that comes to say, uh, having served as an MP or having served as a senator, you should not serve as a governor. Having served as a governor, you should not serve as a, as a senator or vice versa. Or you, then where are we going to get our, our presidents from, you know? If we are saying you can't go back to, to politics, you are telling someone, stay away for five years. Where are we going to get our president, future presidents, future, future governors? According to me, let us understand or let us have an expansionist interpretation of the freedoms within the constitution that is what makes kenya a great nation to live in that is what uh, makes everybody in africa want to come and live in kenya but if we we start restricting it is not the way that uh, the the framers of this constitution intended it to be but uh, so me i will oppose this bill but you'll oppose the bill I but you, you can't bill. really say it is uh, very restrictive because you understand the reason behind it so if you if you mention the reason behind it about the conflict of interest we'll understand why this particular bill is being steamrolled by Raphael. conflict of interest i want to just come just as the same constitution you mentioned 38 because this same laws applies to the president Correct. if you finish your term 10 good years are you uh, this was not very clear does the constitution also buzz you from running? You from running for? Uh, for president after, after again. Again, it, uh, it buzz. It buzz. It buzz. It buzz. It's the same vein that we are actually trying to put on this particular bill with the governors. No, no. Yeah. Uh, governors, if you do two terms, and it's not successive, if you do any two terms for governors, you can't run for governorship. Of course, that you can't. You can't. But, but you can run for, for Senate. You can run for MP. And in American history, even a president has done two terms and has come to work on the Senate. They, they ran on Senate yes, again yes. in the U.S. And he died while serving as a senator. 
So it is possible even for the president to come back to the Senate. All right, but that is a very ju a different jurisdiction when it comes to transparency and corruption. No, no. In yeah, those I, days, I, I, they I, were I, as I, corrupt I, as and <laughs> transparent <laughs> as ever. Bakali, what, what do you think <laughs> about this? Because yes, if you have yeah, you've done your whole <laughs> yeah. 10 years, yeah. then you want to run for Senate, uh, the conflict of interest that you're trying to yeah. posture... Yeah. He, Actually, he must declare interest in, <laughs> in the first place. <laughs> no, no, you think that's a good yeah. <laughs> I'm a member of parliament. So, <laughs> Is it not? Yeah, governor yeah, Kitui? Yeah, that, that's true. I would be uh, going for governor of Kitui County. Ah, congratulations. But, but that, that doesn't mean that, really, that uh, I, I can't comment on the matter. And I'm not yet a governor, so I've not served to, to, to be saying I might want to be a senator or a member of parliament. But, but the issue is, to me, when I, I saw this proposal, I, I was trying to think what is what is the problem what what problem is this senator trying to, to address to cure. Uh, and uh, and uh, what, what i think the, the challenge we have been having the bow is a case whereby you have you have served as a governor that's the executive form, arm of the county government you have you have already uh, concluded your term or you've cleared your term and then you come and contest as a senator now you come to the senate if you look at issues of accountability the Senate is the second tier in terms of oversight. Because the first tier is the county assembly. assembly yes. So the second tier is the Senate. So I was just imagining what the Senate is asking. The, the issue has been thinking through is if, if you, are, you, are, you are a governor and then you are elected the senator immediately after you are governor, the high chance is that then the, 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 the sitting governor, when he's supposed to come and address issues in the Senate, you will, you, be there. you will be there. Yeah. And the other question is... But you see the dilemma. Yeah. No, no, the, the, the other challenge you have been having is, if you look at the other general reports, in most cases, we are actually not up to date. Correct. So we are either two or three years uh, behind. behind. Yeah. So what will happen is, by the time the, the reports of the sitting senator, who was supposed to be the governor, governor. Mm -hmm. the out reports are coming to the Senate as a second tier, yes. you will find that a, a senator is likely to be discussing his own reports in Senate. So you compromise the, the oversight role. And I think these are the issues. That's why the, 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 the senator is saying, why don't we allow five years in between after you become a governor so that now you can contest after five years? Implying that in case your reports come to Senate for, for discussion, then you will not be discussing your own reports. Because it's, it's the Sophia's. You can't discuss your own reports uh, when you are a senator. There will be conflict of interest. Mm -hmm. And I don't know how many of us as Kenyans, will uh, be in a position to say, because this report is touching on me, I excuse myself and I will not be part of it. Mm. We, we like burying our heads in the sand to, to assume that things just go normal. So if that is the case, then I think there, there is serious need to support this, this bill. But then I don't understand why it's including the member of parliament that you can't, as a governor, cannot contest as a member of parliament. Because members of parliament oversight the executive at the national level not at the county level. So while I understand why, why he says a governor should not be a, a, a senator immediately, I can't understand why he's saying he can't be a member of parliament immediately. Because National Assembly does not discuss at all issue to do with county government uh, reports. Okay. So on that note, we'll be saying if you are a minister, you can't be a member of parliament immediately. Because then you'll be coming to, uh, to, to National Assembly where you are, your reports are also like... But you know, ministers are not a PSCs. I think it cannot be tied to the PS accounting officers who will be asked questions. So, so to me, the, the bill, uh, we really need to get this bill right. But from a constitutional point of view, I agree with uh, Senator Mungatana that uh, then constitutionally it doesn't make sense. It's actually unconstitutional. Mm. Because then you are limiting people's rights in terms of uh, electric position and all that. But, but uh, let's how it goes. But to me, I think it's really that those five years I bought an, in but, a situation where... But it's an uh, amendment. Yeah, it's an amendment. It's an amendment. It's an amendment. So it, it, could be, to, yeah. it, it could be amended, but, but I, I'm, I'm just saying those are the areas which informed uh, this proposal. But, but uh, to okay. me, if it came to the National Assembly, uh, I think I would be supporting the, the, the break of five years. You'll be yes, supporting but it. But in case we are able to push our out reports to a level where we are up to date, that by the time I live as a governor, all my reports will have been discussed by the counter assemblies and the Senate, that there's no chance of at all me discussing my own reports in the Senate, then this bill will be, it will not make sense. All right. Kenan, in terms of uh, the standing orders, especially with the committees as well, where we have maybe the senators 
uh, heading these committees and there's this scenario where we're having conflict of interest. Do we really need to amend this constitution? I mean, the com to have an amendment of the constitution or it can be the province also of the standing orders to try and amend the standing orders in light of what uh, the senator is raising here. Does it give any provisions? What, what we require? What is it? What is the, what is the what is the the, the ambit or the the purview that uh, the standing orders really stretches to? Does it stretches to also the election of the committee members, uh, uh, the, the chairs? Yeah, it has been documented that we have some of the best legislative legal framework actually not only in Africa but in the whole world. Just continue. As I said we have, uh, it's documented that we have some of the best legislative or legal framework, mm -hmm. not only in Africa but in the whole world. What we are lacking is adherence to the rule of law. I see if I dissect the, what is going on in the mindset of this particular senator, I, you know, I, I wouldn't call him in his uh, wishy-washy thinking. Uh, Why are you calling it wishy washy? Uh, because, because I can see he's overexcited, uh, and what he wants to do is to cure what requires uh, a, 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 a what do you call it perceptional and cultural change mm. to a legislative constitutional framework. Because what we require, we already have the public officers in exact. So what, what everybody is required, every public officer, is to adhere to both the letter and the spirit of the public officer acts. Once you are conflicted, you invoke the provisions. Because even the standing order that actually is driven from, uh, uh, from the public officer acts is a subset. But Kenan, those, those me, things, me, they don't That work. requires a culture. That no, 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 no. What, let, how me, do, let me explain this. It culture, requires culture, a culture can take a whole there are so many years to change a culture. But in the meantime, what do we do? There, there are so many countries that do not have even written constitutions, written laws. Correct. What they do is they have accepted traditions, norms, that you say this is our norm, you subscribe to it. I think in Kenya, if we say we will, we will over legislate, we will be telling you how to go into your bed, uh, how to go into your bathroom, how to go, that is not what we require. What we require is a total culture, I mean, mindset change that says, look, this is our Kenyan culture, free from corruption, free from uh, abuse of office, free from this. But let me describe this. This is the most undemocratic. To the this, yeah, this, this proposed bill mm -hmm. is undemocratic, it's unconstitutional, it's malicious, it's capricious, it's offensive actually, to the extent that it limits uh, uh, the provisions of Article uh, 38. 38 of our Constitution. Mm -hmm. And this does not require constitutional change. What mm -hmm. it requires is a change of culture, a change of mindset, mm -hmm. so that once you have served in this particular office, look at what is happening right now in, uh, in uh, the Commonwealth. You have former prime ministers still who are, who are members of parliament. You have former prime ministers who are members of the House of Lords. In America, the same. So we do not limit. We do not need to limit uh, the application of our democratic ideals. What we need to do is to strengthen mm -hmm. and enrich our acceptance mm -hmm. of the rule of law. Once everybody subscribes to the rule of law, the ball. Just mm -hmm. like I'm sure, even you as a journalist here, seated here. There are norms that you must subscribe to as an employee of uh, this great uh, media house, isn't it? Mm -hmm. uh, and that might not be even, uh, that, that might, at certain stage, that might conflict with their own uh, uh, personal rules. So the same way with our expanded uh, political uh, environment. So this law, and I want to ask the senators who are there, I'm sure if it comes to the National Assembly, I'll be the first one to go against it because we do not need to legislate this. Uh, we do not need to legislate this. Let's accept the many legislation, the many acts of parliament that we have and are there to the respective provisions. That is what is going to guide uh, this country. So for me, but, but why would you uh, describe it malicious? Because he raises, he's raising a very German and, and a, a very pertinent issue because that because we've been drilling if you are going to we've not been able to last this If one action. is going to legislate or, or bring a constitutional amendment simply because of what is happening in Uzangishu. No. We can ask if I was... No, no, no. It's, uh, no. That was just a case in point. And I'm not saying that this is what really uh, inspired... That is the trigger. Yeah. That is the trigger. Let, let's, let's, let, we, because we are also in this country. Mm. That, I, I'll be asking the Honorable Madago, Senator Madago, to disqualify himself on anything that touches on this issue, mm. whether it is in the finance bill, whether it is... And that solves the problem. To recuse himself. To recuse. To recuse himself. That, yeah. And that solves and that's the problem. That's what I was asking you for. That does not require a constitutional amendment. Yeah, that, yeah indeed. That's what I was asking you yeah. for. Yeah. The yeah. standing orders. Do we have any provisions? Yes, like we that? have the standing orders. We have recused yes. yourself. Yes, yeah. we have. Okay. I and then, and then I, was, I don't know whether it's 90s. Uh, I, I wish I, I had a mic copy here. Yes, I, don't I, don't have, have, I don't have the exact, I don't remember. But we have clearly, where, where 
there is a direct or an mm. indirect interest. Interest. Mm. You invoke the standing order and say you recuse yourself, and that has right. happened many times. Well, uh, uh, Honorable I would love to know which president was this that ran for presidency, then he became a senator. I don't have the name, but it is ah. there. Uh, you have your phone. You can actually Google I, and tell I, us because I, now really? I can't. For me, I'm also it is there. failing to understand who is this senator. Is there. Who, is who is there. this? He's a president who became a, a senator, and he died when he was serving. He died in office as he was serving as senator. I will get it for you. He was a president, then he yes, became a senator. He became a senator, mm -hmm. and uh, you know. What I'm saying is this, eh? I think we as a nation agreed, you know, that we are going to be governed in a certain way. And we said, those who want to run on the executive seat for president, they must ask for vote 50 plus 1 percent. Governors, you ask for vote within your county. And we said that if you're able to convince the people, the people are the, the highest, they are the sovereign let the people choose who they want so if, if someone has served as a member of parliament or even member of the county assembly and uh, the people in his county are saying you become an mp don't start saying oh because you served two terms as an mca you should not be an mp or if an mp wants to become a president or you want to become a, a senator you know, you or know, a governor uh, you don't tell the people, I'm trying to give you the sovereign. Yeah, but you're not, the sovereign. You're not putting it con contextually. No, I'm you know, trying... It's good to put it... Because if you take a text no, right, out of a context... But I'm trying yeah. to explain to you the sovereign, what we call Wanjiku here in this Kenya, is a very complicated man or woman. And they can decide anything. They can decide, we don't want you for governor. And no matter what you say, we just don't want. Like it happened to, to Ngil. You know? We just don't want. And then... It could be that th that one chico, that sovereign, has said, look, you did for us uh, a, a job as a governor. You did a very good job. Please rest. We don't want you as a senator. It happened to Kibwana. You see, that the sovereign, that one chico person, is a very complicated person. And the same person can say, look, uh, you did a very good job for us as a governor. Uh, please uh, serve us as a, as a, as an, as a, as a senator. Or even as an MP. You know, there were governors who were trying to be MPs. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. and the sovereign said, no, we don't, I don't want you there. But here we are saying, the sovereign, the Wanjiko, has said, I want to move you from being a governor to a senator. Then you come and put, put another law there, restricting the sovereign from appointing his, his servant mm -hmm. to serve in the Senate. It does not make sense. We are curtailing the freedoms of what the sovereign can do. Let the sovereign All right. if, decide if, if, through the if, ballot if they amend that who particular they draft want to do and they, they, to hold what position If they, they amend want. that particular draft and they, they chop off the MPs, so, yeah, you running for an MP as well, because that will deem to be very punitive, as you say, we don't really touch on anything that is running with the counties or other affairs of the counties. Will it fly for you? It will not. I'm saying if the sovereign, Wanjiko, says <laughs> the governor, uh -huh should run he wants to use the same governor to be their senator please let him be allowed all right you normally and talk about the law and the spirit can you can we talk about the spirit of this uh, this draft itself yeah because that's a spirit no, we, we want to clamp down on corruption we're living in a country where you have the anti-money laundering bill all acts you're trying to shake it into place and mm. still there's a country which is lifting uh, you know, the threshold of how much money you can actually be tran transacting and the, the C CBK is not raising a flag. Before you couldn't actually just withdraw one million shillings. Mm. But now you can actually do that without any batting of an eye because sure. the government has lifted that. No, so government has not it has lifted. No. It has. You do your homework. It has lifted. Yeah. I think there was, yeah, a proposal, there was a proposal there was a proposal it was not a to proposal. increase it. it was, I'm very familiar with that particular law. Initially, it was ten thousand dollars. Ten thousand dollars at the exchange rate then mm. was the equivalent about a nine hundred to something. To something. Okay. Now ten thousand dollars is equivalent to almost one point five. Yeah. So what the government was doing to say it, raise it to uh, one point five. One point five still 
equivalent to the ten thousand dollars. So I don't think there's a there's a proposal. I don't think whether that has changed. The best of my recollection. No, from the, from, for the first reading, not, and, 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 yes. And, and, and the way the law is, it's not illegal to withdraw. You declare. You Any, explain. You explain. You declare, anything, yeah. anything above uh, one million or nine hundred ninety-nine thousand, you declare. There's a form that you have to fill. Otherwise, you can withdraw anything. Even you can even withdraw a billion. But you have to say the why you are withdrawing. Mm -hmm. So the declaration bit is what I'm talking about. The declaration is still there. It's been lifted. It's, no, it is not. It's been lifted. No, it is okay. not. Okay. <laughs> I'll do my homework. Going, going, I know going it's back been to this issue, Debal, eh? I want to say this. Eh? Wanjiku can't be wrong because the senators who have served as governors, and I'm giving an example of uh, Ali Roba, an example of uh, Mandago. When we are discussing issues, you know, because of the practical experience they have had, they also have a certain, uh, uh, you know, sense to it that add value to those of us who haven't served it's as governors. Yeah. So, uh, and, and, and Wanjiku chose not to bring all governors in. He just said, I'll, I'll just have two in the Senate. Mm -hmm. So let's respect Wanjiku. Let us not uh, say the sovereign is wrong. And let's put, uh, you know, like these rules that you oh, before you become a governor, you should be having a degree. I don't know, you should do what, 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 before you are an MP. Uh, I don't know, tax what, what. All these things cannot be correct. When Wanjiku says, mm -hmm. you are the man, let us respect the sovereign. And the sovereign in Kenya is that very complicated person we call Wanjiku. Mm -hmm. the, so, the, president, the president who died, actually, I got his name. The U.S. president, who later on became a senator in 1875, was Andrew Johnson. Andrew, Andrew Johnson, Johnson. 1875. Yeah, mm -hmm. in 1875. Okay. Yeah. Andrew mm -hmm. Johnson. And that tradition is still there, all of them. Mm -hmm. Yes. All right. Uh, in almost all democratic uh, countries. But what we are lacking uh, in the Bali is the culture. Uh, we we need to inculcate. We need to domesticate that culture, so that even if something is not expressly written in the law, it becomes part of our Kenya culture. You remember between 2003. 2005, mm. at the beginning of the initial stages of uh, mm. Kipaki's presidency. Uh, mm. The only republic will even arrest police officers on the streets. Correct, correct. Mm. Okay? And everybody accepted. Uh, I think that is what we need to inculcate. Mm. And, and once we do that, then we will not be, uh, 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 you know, yoked mm -hmm. to these written rules that say mm. uh, the Honorable uh, Senator uh, uh, <laughs> Uh, Danson must dress in this particular format. Yeah. Mm. It becomes part of, uh, 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 you know, we dress to hide our nudity. Uh, we do certain things. We have taken this cup of tea in order to quench our desire for this. That, 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 that's a tradition. So these are things that actually we need to inculcate. Right. But for mm. me, I'm, mm. I'm, I'm, I'm against this issue of legislating every bit mm -hmm. of imagined uh, 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 challenges within our governance structure. Right. But I think yeah. the, basic, the basic principle of uh, the bowl is that. Uh, you know, in an elected position, where the voter is the final decision maker, let's give the voter free hand to mm. make that decision. Mm. So that you don't uh, start telling the voter, I want this, you, you must elect from this choice mm. and not an open. Mm. I think that to me that's a basic principle and it's a constitutional okay. principle Thank you. Mm. that we allow them to, to, to make that final decision. And I think uh, uh, just on, on clarity beat, the cabinet has approved uh, a proposal that was, uh, this is what uh, we were talking about. Yes. And I think you, you are right, yeah. that the cabinet has approved a proposed law that seeks to raise the threshold for the reporting large cars transactions by banks to 2.12 billion shillings, that is $15,000. Mm. Uh, the passage of a law would be a major win for a cash incentive businesses whose owners have lobbied for years for the limit to be raised. And mm. Kenya is a signatory to the United Nations Security Council's anti-money laundering and combating finance, financing of terrorism framework and members of a financial action task force that monitors countries in efforts to combat money laundering and tourism financing. So uh, due to this large cash transactions of $10,000, 10,000, yeah, US dollars, that is 1.141 million, 1.41 million are currently to be reported by the banks to the financial reporting centers, uh, center that is a FRC. Mm -hmm. So it's just good to, to clarify mm -hmm. that. Okay. Now we are remaining with the around 25 minutes um, yes. and I wanted just to also focus on a very big day that uh, devolution is. As you can see, oh, we have the editorial cartoon there mm. and uh, it is happy birthday. If my, my director may just pick up this cartoon and the devolution cake is there to 
be celebrated. It's over 10 years, isn't it? 10 years. Yes. Since the, is, is it 13 years right now? Since 2010. And we can see, looking at that at Yutoka Tun, counties with a big, with a big uh, rotund belly, President Ruto is really tightening the belt on counties, especially on the issues of finances. Uh, deployment of finances to the counties. This has been a hue and a cry for the governors. Could we discuss mm. uh, just uh, what are some of the highlights that you expect, mm. especially for Dan Mungatana, who's the senator, will be heading there as well. Mm. Uh, what is the primary overarching issue that you think needs to be uh, addressed currently, especially for you senators when it comes to overseeing counties because you've been fronting for the 5 billion shillings oversight fund that has been quashed by the National Assembly. And it's good to, to know why the National Assembly has been quashing this. Mm. Yet you say um, you're not involved in any way on matters to, to do with the runnings of the counties. Yeah, the counties. Yes. Why, why then will you quash but the, the 5 billion But, 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 but budget to, matters, well, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I know this is a budget but, matters, yeah, but yeah. they raise a very germane issue. They, yes. they are not facilitators as you are. They yeah. cannot do the rounds in the counties to put up an office, to have the cars. I mean, looking at Tana River, it's an expansive county. You need resources. You need support mm -hmm. to do that. Don't you I, think that? that yeah. I personally but, but don't, don't, say they don't are like that. Uh, <laughs> you don't that, like that debate. You don't like the debate. Yeah, because I think the oversight is not the issue. The issue is how a county is performing. Okay, it's been ten years, and if you go and sit at uh, the 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 CPAC, the the Senate uh, uh, parliamentary. Uh, the Public Accounts Committee, mm -hmm. you will see the kind of problems that are existing there. Uh, many, many governors are coming uh, to the Public Accounts Committee and not being able to explain how the monies that uh, we have voted for are being utilized. Uh, for this term, for example, Tana River County, we have sent under the equitable, uh, fund, uh, equitable share you sent 6.7 billion. Now, if you look at preceding years, when the governors are being asked questions, you know, they are not able to explain. Mm -hmm. So this is the big issue that we have with county governors. And it, it doesn't need, uh, you know, uh, you know, a lot of thinking or uh, a super brain for you to see that there has been a lot of non-accountability on the funds, the equitable share that is sent to the county yes. government. And even now, we have uh, voted the equalization fund. And for us in the Senate, we said this equalization fund should not go to the governors. Instead, the, the treasury, uh, the county treasury, uh, CEC, should be a signatory together with the county commissioners so that we remove that mm small amount away from the, the governors because governors uh, they, there's a lot of problems they, they bring in a proposal on how money should be released to them the money is released to them they are told to go and clear these dates and then when they, the money reaches there they okay. clear other dates the old dates are remaining people are really suffering traders are suffering so aside from, from that so the issues of money are going to be a big issue when we retire there. Governors have always been saying that money is not being released on time. In this William Ruto administration, for the first time in, in 10, 15 years, county governments have been paid on time, you know, without any delay. And uh, so they don't have that excuse anymore, you see. But that is not entirely true. Because it we, we it saw, is. no, 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 no it we, is. We, that is not true. It is not true. It we, is. We, we saw the, the, the county government, uh, especially the Council of Governors, threatening to. That was before. But no, this, what do you mean before? No, it was, it was just this year. This year, I'm yeah. saying, but when the time came for the payment of this, of this, of this uh, financial year, the it money was, a, was It was paid. until they pushed the envelope that no, the government no, released no, no. the, the 32 we, billion shillings. We paid it on time. This administration paid it on time. Unlike in previous uh, uh, years. And governors have come out, the chair herself uh, has come out to say, we are grateful for what has happened, you know? In fact, 
We have said this so many times in the Senate that the opposition now is saying, no, 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 no. Don't tell us you've paid on time. You are supposed to have been paying on time. You know, and we return it back to them and tell them, my friends, during your time and the previous time, you never used to pay the governors on time. So don't, don't argue that matter. Mm -hmm. Governors have come out to say themselves that mm -hmm. this has been a major, a major game changer. So the point I was trying to make is that they don't have that excuse anymore. You know, they don't have the excuse that their monies are not being released on time, so they can't plan, they can't pay, they can't do this. It is now governors who must de deliver on the services that they are giving to the people. Thank you. Can that I, is can one. I just, can now, I just... let, me, let me finish one, one last point. No, before we go to the one, one point. One last point mm -hmm. that we will need to be very interested in. County governments are not doing their own source revenue collection. And... Uh, Treasury has come out very many times to say they make these uh, targets and they, they don't meet those targets. And it is like they are continuing to depend only on their equitable share from the Treasury. They are not raising their own money at all. So those are going to be important issues for us. You know, when the equitable share comes, how do you spend it? And what about your own source revenue? Why are you not raising these monies? You keep giving excuses, but why are you not raising? Because it is you who proposes that I'm going to raise 1.2 billion this this annual, uh, this 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 an, uh, this year, uh, and then you come, you have only raised 300 uh, million or something like that, mm -hmm. uh, 300 million instead of 1.2 billion that you had predicted. So we are going to have. I think those are going to be some of the. Right, excellent issues that are going to be there. I wanted, I wanted Orobo Makali mm. uh, to just make it very limpid and clear, mm. especially mm. in terms of uh, the timing, yeah, the timing mm. of and disbursement of this money. Mm. Then we come to the yeah, issue. Some uh, of the uh, a quick one, uh, about, I think as Kenyans we all agree, devolution is good for this country. But in terms of issues of list of funds, a financial year, a government financial year, runs from July to June. And if you look at the law. It is very clear that the government should be releasing money to counties mm -hmm. uh, at intervals over the year. Now, what has happened this year is that the government has managed to give the total allocation to counties of 370 billion within the year, mm -hmm. but not on time. Mm -hmm. okay. Because if you remember, the last tranche which was released was released just almost the last day to the financial year. So. While the government has done a good thing by, to ensure that the money is released within the year, mm -hmm. but it is not on time. So, uh, in the past, there has been rollover. You find the year closes, and there are also balances to be released to the counties. Mm -hmm. So, what has happened, and, is, and the step in the right direction, is that by 30th June, as the year was closing, mm -hmm. the money had now been released to the counties. So, what we want to see now in terms of improvement, the word in time would mean you list the money as stated in the Public Finance Management Act. So that after every quarter, which was not was, done, which was not done, yeah. But the good thing is the money was released mm -hmm. here. That, that, that is the clarification okay. I wanted to give. The other matter, which I think uh, the senator uh, Mugatana has raised, and is, is very important that as the aid to endure it, this matter must be seriously discussed among the senator. That you guys, your oversight in the counties, as when we go, we go just as observers. The budget committee has been invited. Uh, some of my colleagues will be participating, but just uh, not really the key speakers as, of, as observers. This matter of own revenue uh, source is critical. What is happening, there is a lot of money being not collected. Mm -hmm. And uh, we've been pushing hard for an integrated system, digital system, yes. which can be applied across all the counties. Mm -hmm. Correct. So that we standardize the issue of revenue collection. If you get that right, I can tell you for sure, counties will reduce the reliance on the uh, uh, national trust. Mm -hmm. In that case, then we'll have more money going now for national development because they'll have their own resources. Or even if we give them the same equitable share, then they'll have more resources mm -hmm. to do more development projects. Correct. And this will now make devolution from where I sit to be a very effective tool mm -hmm. in terms of development delivery. So, so to me, the issue of all revenue source is important. The other issue which is critical, and I think it's important, you also but, uh, discuss it. But even though when you talk about all source revenue, we, yes. not all counties are endowed the same. No, not all, yeah, that's we what I'm have, saying. We have, uh, yeah, other counties that we can have 
titanium mining that maybe yeah. can be very yeah. lucrative is not compared maybe to Kitui. No, that's what we are saying. With Basically, you know, each county is unique, but each county has revenue streams which can be tapped. Mm -hmm. So, so let's look at each county and see which areas, because if you look to most counties now, it's like our standard menu, uh, land rates, market collections, it's more, it's more money from, so we want to, to, to expand that. I think about innovative way of getting more money for the counties based on their local resources. Mm -hmm. For example, if, if there's mining in an area, let's exploit the minerals so that by collecting the levies from that source, you, you enhance your, your collection. You. The you. other matter, which is critical of the bar before you leave, mm -hmm. is, is, is the issue of county assemblies financial autonomy it is very critical that you 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 free the assemblies to be able to to, to plan their, their their activities and be able to access the resources the way the national assembly does honorable kanana has been a commissioner in our, in our in our parliament we don't rely on treasury for we don't bring our take our fortunes to treasury for for approval all counties in this country must take their uh, their financial proposals to the cec finance mm. to approve that makes it very complicated in the situation where the assembly is not talking the same language with the executive. So this, to me, are critical matters if you really want to enhance devolution. All right. Yes. yes. Kenan. That last bit, I'm sure even for our independence as parliament, we fought for it jealously. It's mm. up to uh, the members of the county assemblies actually to fight for also their independence from the governors. It's not something that anybody mm. else can do. We can't force it. That's why some of us have been pushing for at least some level of education for our county assembly members so that they can also understand. When you're, it's us. We fought for it. You remember in 1999 yeah. what we did? Parliament used by the Department of uh, Office of the President. We fought hard uh, and that is what gave birth to the Parliamentary Service Commission. But that being the case, let's go back to the evolution. For some of us, like where my brother comes from, where we come from, uh, for me as a northerner, northern Kenya, uh, somebody who comes from northern Kenya, we, we say we got our independence in 1991, uh, the repeal of Section 2A, because before then, we used to have the District Contagious Act. We used to have so many other laws that are discriminating. Mm -hmm. We are saying we got, uh, that was our, our internal oh. self-rule, let me call it. Mm -hmm. We got our independence in, in the year 2010 when we got the volition. And luckily, I was in Parliament. Mm -hmm. You remember that particular time, Nepal? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, Nepal, sorry. Mm -hmm. There were two groups. Actually, three groups. One group led by... Uh, uh, the then uh, uh, groups who are collecting alone, uh, Honorable Raila Odinga and uh, other groups wanted a pure parliamentary system. <coughs> mm -hmm. Another group who are collecting around Mr. Kibaki wanted a pure presidential system. For, so, for some of us who didn't subscribe to both groups, luckily, at the last minute, we just said we need to have devolution. Mm -hmm. And devolution was entrenched in that particular document and we thank the framers of the current constitution. As to whether devolution has worked or not, is something that we need all to evaluate. The intention was good, and I think there's this mistaken belief, misinterpretation of the law. What we have is an economic devolution. It's not, Kenya is not a federal state. True. What we have, and I think that, 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 that has to be cleared, uh, because it's still not clear in the minds of uh, many county administrators. What we have is an economic devolution. That is why the issue of synchronizing and harmonizing the tax collection mechanism it's critical because where does the national government get resources if the counties are not working? And that's why what my brother here has alluded to is the right thing to do. It ought to have been done a few years ago. It must be done right now. Equally, there's a lot of wastages simply because either the county assemblies are not effective in their oversight or simply because the structures that led to devolution are not still working. And the way devolution actually was implemented was not very good. Look at the issue of, of public service. This, uh, you know, it's like from 2010, 2013, immediately after the election, it's like every county was given an open check to go and recruit and do whatever they want. That removed the national aspect. And I think this is because the way they implement, the, 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 those who, who are tasked to oversight at that particular time, I think didn't apply due diligence. Mm -hmm. Right now what it is, it is high time that we need to call a spade a spade. Do we need devolution? We need devolution. Is devolution working? Yes, it worked in some areas. Like take for example, Wajia. For the first time, we have uh, Tamak Road. For the first time since independence, it's something that long, long when we were in primary, we used to say, what is Tamak Road? The definition of a Tamak Road, the class teacher will tell you. We used to say, a black substance found in <laughs> down Kenya. <laughs> down Kenya. The other Kenya. The, 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 down Kenya. So in the minds of that particular kid, a black substance, like me now, as a leader, as a person, and I, I remember one time I was part of a class that defined 
tarmac as a uh, black substance found in down Kenya. <laughs> so that, that, that down Kenya is no more, it's part of Kenya. That black substance is not, it's courtesy of, actually, Wajir got the first Devolution. tarmac road, courtesy of devolution. devolution. That's true. And many, uh, so it's something that we need to appreciate. But then I also got the same, I'm told Garza got all the, I'm sure even Tana River, Tana River Hola. all are got the same. Mm. To that extent, devolution is something that we will always jealously defend. Uh -huh. What remains right now is to fill and make and cure the pitfalls, both administrative, mm. perceptional, mm. constitutional, revenue based. These are the challenges of the new. How do you cure? We have one country. We do not have a federal state. These laws must be harmonized. The county revenue mechanisms must be uh, synchronized with the national revenue mechanism, mm -hmm. so that what is collected in the farthest village in my place ends up adding value to both the county and also the national government. These are things that we need to, uh, Thank you. to, to, to think of. But finally, let me say this. Devolution, is, Kenya is not the first country. Most countries actually have devolution, whether it's a federal state, whether it's a confederation, whether it's an economic devolution. There's devolution, some sort of devolution almost in the governance platform of many other countries, whether it's administrative uh, uh, platform like the French. What we need right now to earn ourselves, we have one country. These resources that are collected, and we need to commend the government and I think there's something that my brother here is an expert on this. What the government, this government has done differently is by 30th June, the end of that financial year, the government, whether it's delayed for one month or one two, mm -hmm. and you really need to appreciate this. Mm, the true. government does not mint money. Thank you. The government does not manufacture money. The government uses the resources that have been collected. Thank you. you don't collect the resources. Thank you. So the government lived after its expression. You have had the governor say for 10 years. But time is up. Revolution. I, yes. I need the to government be. lived up to its obligation Thank you. to meet the budgetary obligation. And I will need to say kudos. The onus is now on the county governors to make sure that is also translated into Thank you. proper use. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, Ken. And we are, of course, uh, very, very behind time. And I just want us to get, get to our closing remarks. Mm -hmm. First of all, uh, uh, we have a very interesting editorial cartoon. We do not really understand this particular strategy by Azimio. I will, I will withdraw my protesters from the streets to windows. What does it mean? Uh, you and the other side. <laughs> 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 yeah. 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 Instead of them being taken like peaceful demonstrators, they have been shot at, they have been killed, they have been maimed, and all those uh, terminologies. So he's saying now, next time instead of, of me sending my demonstrators out there to do it, I would ask, ask them to remain indoors without leaving their, their houses to demonstrate, to, um, to, to tell the government that we are unhappy with the matter. That's what he's saying. So long as the policemen are going to continue shooting our people. So next Monday we're not having you on the show. Why not? You'll be indoors. At home. You'll be in the But Monday, yeah, we have said we are going to demonstrate. The, uh, <laughs> that means if, if, if the declarations will be in those, I will be in those. Why the declaration? I, I will be, we'll be coming in the back of us to your houses. <laughs> I will be in those. Why not? You're closing your But anyway, yes. for me, as I could close my, my final word, I wish well the devolution conference. I'm looking forward to us making devolution work in this country. It's the best thing we have given to Kenya. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Mungatana, then oh, we have Kenya. Yes. I, I will use this phrase that civility in politics is not a sign of cowardice. Uh, I, I want to commend the Honorable Raila and the team for calling off the Mando Mando, which has been very destructive, uh, very extremely destructive, and, uh, and, and uh, uh, created a scenario of lawlessness. The other issue of whether people will stay indoors or not, I am sure uh, many Kenyans will not subscribe to that because people need food. Uh, they need, uh, maybe they have a strategy, you never know. Uh, they, they, <laughs> they, maybe maybe that, 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 there'll be a health pack handout that, 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 that concept maybe applies in the <laughs> utopian world. So I'm sure Kenyans will not subscribe to it. Well, but I want to, add, I want to add this. Now that we have accepted the rule of law, we have accepted uh, the diplomatic mechanism. Well, I need of, to go. Of, of this, let's all subscribe to the rule of law. Thank you. That will add value to the well being of the people of Kenya. Thank you. My closing remarks is that uh, our country is headed to good times. Uh, even God has confirmed it by sending the rains. I just pray that leaders will just do their job. Uh, everybody should do 
their job and honestly do their job on behalf of the people. But country called Kenya is headed to good times. I'm so hopeful.